Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 357. <laughs> I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. There's going to be a lot of helping from each other today because um, the internet's down at Leslie's house. Yeah, it's a, it's a big outage um, for Comcast. Uh, Laura only lives a few miles away, but she's I have fine. internet. Um, and we haven't had internet for almost two hours, which, you know, first world problems for sure, but um, it we does... We do our show notes on Google Docs. Yeah, so. <laughs> so that makes it harder. Um, and we can't adapt to other things. <laughs> no, well, why should we have to? <laughs> um, so anyway, um, it is the eve before SSK. SSK happens on... Well, we leave tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. Today is Monday, July 17th. Tomorrow is Tuesday, Tuesday the 18th. <laughs> and we're leaving in the morning and taking Pearl and going to the Skirt Bennett Center. And we're meeting Gwen there and her friend Sarah Dienitz. They're our helpers. Yeah. And we're going to get started on more SSK prep. Yeah, like, the we, things that we do on site. We always get there a day early so we can make sure all the goodie bags are stuffed, all the... Oh, excuse me, all the um, the rooms are set up the way they need to be. We got, you know, our little check-in area is all set up and everything so that it's as smooth as possible for you guys when you get there. And we try to go shopping at House of Yarn and Bliss before. Yeah, because it's not really reasonable for us to go off-site and do that during the event. Yeah, and um, Craft South and some yes. other places. So that's the plan as of right now. So yeah, we're doing it this without show notes, so... Um, apologies for any scatterbrainedness. <laughs> also, I was going to upload last week's episode while we were recording this one. Can't do that <laughs> without the internet. So you're going to no get two internet. right in a row. Bam, bam. There you go. Wheezy was complaining that he didn't have his Knit Girls episode mm. <laughs> when he got home from vacation. Very was sad. Like, mm. Well, he'll have two right in a row and he'll have the Knit Girls in two days. Yeah, he will. So He is, he and Pearl, Pearl's my puppy, are going on an adventure. They're going camping together and swimming and kayaking and all sorts of stuff. I'll be interested to see if Pearl's a swimmer. <laughs> I'm le like Pearl won't go outside when it rains, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm leaning towards no on the water sports. But we'll find out. Actually, Opa will find out. I did. Uh, I was going to. So Pearl got microchip today. This is going to be a random lease. Random episode apparently and she, I have like this little hammock that's waterproof that covers my back seats and she decided she was not going to sit on top of the hammock she went underneath it and was on like the floorboards because it connects between the two seats like that was too much of a barrier for her <laughs> She was so mad about getting microchipped. <laughs> She's like, anything I can do to make your life difficult, I'm going to do it. So, um, I thought about taking that out so that it would be easier to access seatbelts. There are little, like, Velcro things that you can mm -hmm. lift up and get to the seatbelts. But I thought, we're taking a bunch of wheels. Pearl's running in the back with a rose, I think. And I was like, man, I can make this easier if I just took this off. But Opa's going to borrow it for his truck. I want to see her get up in that truck. Oh, I bet she could do that. She'll be confused, but we'll see. She might, she might get boosts places. I'm still not entirely sure how we're going to fit all this SSK stuff <laughs> in the cargo van that we rented, but it'll be okay. We're going to make it work. We I are. realized earlier when I was laying in bed this morning before I got up and got started with my day. I was like, oh, I'll have the passenger seat. <gasps> I can put a wheel there. <laughs> yeah, I told you that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. You could probably put a wheel on the floorboards too in front of. It would and have to one be one that, that's, I don't know if either one of mine would fit there. I oh. guess it would depend on how much yeah, floor you have space. big wheels. Anyway, we've got other squishable stuff that'll fit in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I put the Lendrum, I have the Lendrum upright. That goes on the floorboards yeah, there. Yeah, that, because that folds up to, a, to some degree. I don't fold it up, though. It'll fit on the floor. Like, the front part goes underneath the seat. It slides in. We've done that. I've played this game okay. before. And then the ladybug will go on the front seat. And then the rose is going in the back with Pearl. The sidekick is going on the floorboards because that does fold up. And the two giant ass wheels <laughs> are going on the car carpet. <laughs> I told you I could take the wheels, the Saxony wheels off, and that'll make it a little bit easier, maybe. I think we'll be okay. And then you've got the flat iron, too. Yes. And I've got the flat iron and the matchless and the infinite twist wheel. 
And I've got um, the uh, mini spinner, which I need to remember to take because I've got I keep the drum carter. I've got the swift and ball winder. I've got my drum ca carter and my picker. And you've got a Hand cricket. cards. Yeah, the yeah. loom. We'll get it all there. Yeah. It'll make it. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> We're going to uh, warp some space time continuums, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, knitting. Knitting. Would you like to go? Sure. I am working on three projects, one of which I'm going to rip out, but I wanted to show it to you guys before I'm going to rip out. That's not this one. This is a baby hat. I'm just kind of winging it. I cast on using... I cast on 50 stitches. And I was going to use the Ambud... Um, show it to you. I was going to use the Ambud pattern book. Like, you know, how she's got the handy book oh, of patterns. Oh, books for teachers to sign. That needs to go on the list. Eh. Eh. I'm fine without having mine signed. Oh, well, I'm going to get mine signed. Oh, man. Jillian's going to be there, too. Jillian will be there. Anne will be there. Lethal. Lethal's got that new coloring book. Um, Margaret's got, like, four books. Yeah, I've only got one of hers, I think, but... <sighs> man. Anyway. I didn't get my Best Smith book. I noticed the other day I didn't get my Best Smith book signed when I took the class with from her. I'm terrible at remembering. Either. Anyway, so I have this cool hand spun. Core spun? It is core spun from a knit spin farm bat. This, so for my Harry Potter knit and crochet house cup, which is a group on Ravelry. That's a mouthful. <laughs> They, um, I'm doing an owl, so owls are bigger projects, and my owl is to spin eight different structures, this is core spun, and knit them into baby hats. So, and, and that has to be at least 25 yards knit. I've spun six of the eight structures, and this is my first baby hat, and I have two more weeks. <laughs> so Yeah, but baby hats you can knit yeah. much more, um, they're much more transportable than the spinning. They are, and also, um... They'll go. Like, I should be able to finish. I just cast this on, like, 15 minutes before I came to your house, and I'm probably gonna... I'll get it done tonight. So this is core spun. I'm just doing a rolled brim. I think I'm just gonna do rolled brim on all of them. Yeah, look, it's so funny, because there's these big loops at the bottom from the cast-on edge from the rolled brim, because it's, like, a thick and thin. Yeah. Which is kind of funky and cool. Um, I'm using size 9 needles. The way I figured out what size needles to use is I took something like this, it's a needle sizer, and I doubled my yarn, and I stuck it through what hole I thought would fit. And look, that one goes through an eight, but where I was, that's the problem, this is more thick and thin. So I stuck it through doubled, made a little loop, and it actually would probably work better with the eights, but on mine it went through the nines, because it is a little bit more thick and thin, and I think it, it's working out okay. It's a little loosey-goosey, but I don't think it's too bad. No. No. It's a pretty, like, um, it's got good coverage. Yeah, so there's not it's like not, big like, holes. super big holes. So, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what it does when it's blocked, because core spun typically acts like it's core. And on this, it was mohair. Lighting's kind of... Those bottom loops are driving me a little bit crazy, but oh, I think I can, like... Me. I can fiddle with that. Like, I can pull that over a little bit more. I can adjust those stitches a little bit. Anyway, so that is the first of eight baby hats. Um, structure number seven is on the wheel, but it's kind of in progress, so I didn't bring it. So that's the first thing on my needles. It says nine needles. The second thing on my needles are some lightning struck heart socks I'm using Nova Platinas. <laughs> they look like they're in the same place that they were last week but guess what you finished There's a whole, whole sock. sock except for the heel so i'm doing afterthought heels because that's easiest for me when i'm traveling and so i've got one sock done another one on the needles this is going with me to ssk the baby hat is not um so this is going to be the main project that i work on at ssk it's in my fat squirrel fibers national parks bag which makes me want to go to more national parks, for sure. But it's a cute bag. And then what I am going to rip out is in my Knit Girls anniversary anniversary bag from Twist Fiber Studios. And it is the 
Shall I Started. Dotted Raised. Dotted Raised by Stephen West. And it is a little too loosey-goosey for my taste. Like, I'm not... So are you going to cast it on with larger needles, or are you going to do something completely No, I'm going to... It's too loose. I'm going to cast it on with smaller needles. Oh, sorry. That's what I meant. Um, and I'm using, actually, needles that need to go in the tasting room, so... I might cast it on with something else, like a different yarn that's uh, less thick and thin, too. Or you could just leave it and do a couple rows of garter stitch and put it in the tasting room. And then rip it out when you're done, because why double work yourself and cast on a bunch of other stitches? That's true. Um, but this is... But it's your hand spun, too. Yeah, it is my hand spun. Because um, I could already hear it in Laura's voice. Yeah, I'll say I'm going to do it, but then I'm going to totally change it when I leave. Well, I was just going <laughs> to rip this out and then cast on with some um, with size 5 needles. Was I have some Volmiza already like wrapped into a small ball to use. So these are the last needles for me to cast on. What you haven't seen that are kind of works in progress is I cast on and knit a row on 35 different pairs of needles for the Good. tasting room. <laughs> so, so you have that 35 new whips. <laughs> well, they're itty bitty. But they're many still. Stains. <laughs> so they are uh, they're going to be ripped out after SSK. And then the yarn just, I'm going to rip this out while I'm talking to y'all. The yarn um, will get you know, just left in little mini skeins, and then we'll use it year after year until it gets looking a little frayed, and then I'll get rid of it. So I uh, put all the needles in separate little, like, Ziploc bags with the yarn. I label them all with what the needles are, what the yarn is. Because you're amazing. I don't know about that. And I, um, we're doing something a little bit new with the tasting room. We're doing, like, a tea chart where people can write their notes on there and then take a picture. And anyway, so, um... I do have to sit and write all the names of the needles on pieces of paper, but I figure I could do that when I was working desk at SSK yeah. one day. Because we, we go off and on on desk duty. Yeah. Like, sometimes Leslie's taking a class, sometimes I'm taking two classes. <laughs> sometimes, uh... And I don't mind sitting Gwen's at there. the desk and working it, because when people do come up and chat with me, it's one-on-one, -on -one and that's easier for me. Yeah. Than a whole group. I like walking around and talking to people more. So, anyway, those are the last set of needles that I need to cast on. And those are the Ignites. Let me show them to y'all. I didn't do that because I'm a terrible podcaster. Really so, are. these are Ignites. Uh, I think Plymouth bought them. I have one of their interchangeable sets that was not Plymouth. They've got, like, this dark metal tip. So it's like a grayish metal tip, which is pretty sharp. Sharper than a regular Addy, more like an Addy lace, maybe? Um, similar to a Carbons, I would say. Or Knitter's Pride Royale. And then they've got a wooden shaft. There is nice lettering, so you can see what size they are. And then they've got this black, um, not super flexible cord. More flexible than the red Chaigu, less flexible than, like... Um, a signature. No. Yeah. More flexible than the red Chagu, less flexible than the signature. If the signature cords bother you because they're too flexible, this might be an idea. It's not as sharp as the signature, though. Anyway, I got these from Webs, I think. So those are, and I enjoyed knitting with them. I also messed up that pattern because I was playing with the nieces, and yeah. it is what it is. So those are the three things that are on my needles. Well, two, and then now there's one off. So, anyway. Um, I only have one thing that I've worked on at all this week, knitting-wise. It's, like Laura it, uh, inferred, it has been the week, the week or two weeks before SSK are always really busy because we're getting the last of our um, promotional items in and breaking down, you know, items from ten separate boxes and to condensing them as few, as few as we can. Taking pictures of all the door prizes. Yes. Um, although I didn't have to do any of that boring stuff. I just got to open them. <laughs> um, we played Christmas. Yeah. That is always nice. Um, so, I, and then I sewed some stuff, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Yeah, but, Leslie's been busy with the sewing. She's got sewing foes. So, the only thing that I'm working on is um, living in a Tom Ben bag, because this seems to be primarily the bags that I use. 
but I'm using the Desert Vista Dye Works um, seven year anniversary colorway. Um, these are my July socks and last week I was about here and I've turned the heel and I'm working yeah, on the yeah. gusset. So that's, it's not a lot, but it's what I've gotten done. Um, some weeks are like that, unfortunately. Uh, I was also on call this week and between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which were regular work days, and then the weekend where I'm sort of scheduled to work about an hour, both Saturday and Sunday for daily processes, I worked 57 hours. So there wasn't a whole lot of time for crafting in there. Um, and you were pearl sitting. And I was pearl sitting, who was just an angel for me. Was she? As, as well as Humberto. They were both really good for me. <laughs> um, and then they were jerks as soon as Laura got home. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Humberto especially. But yeah, so that's the only thing I'm working on. I do not have any finished objects. Um, I don't have any finished objects, but you've got the sewing finished objects. I do, and I have some spinning too. I have some spinning. Do you want to show your sewing finished objects? Um, sure. So, every year at SSK, one of the things that Laura and I end up using a lot is uh, Mama Lemon made us these like craft aprons yeah. with pockets, um, and they're they're sort of they're like a half apron, so they're like from waist down to a few inches above your knee, and they've got pockets in them, and they just tie around. And um, they work great, except for me, after I've been wearing it for a couple of hours, it ends up loosening and loosening and loosening. And, and then falling down. We put a lot of weight in the pockets. Yeah, we do. Um, so we're using them much more heavily than they were intended to be used. We put tickets in there and money and, and our phones. phones. <laughs> God knows what else um, has ended Pens, up in there. Pencils, orifice hooks. So this Who year knows? I decided I was going to make us some um, Japanese style uh, cross back, like pinafore style aprons. Um, so they go over the shoulders and they can handle the weight of all the crap in the pockets better. So I made one for me and figured out all the problems and then I made Laura's. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're always more critical of your own stuff. So this one That's is cute. This one is mine. What fabric? Where did the fabric come from? Um, the Loopy U, the same place I got yours. Okay. So, um, the the pattern for this is on Craftsy. If anybody's really interested in it, let me know, and I will um, send you a link. It was a paid for pattern, I think. Um, yeah, I think you spent six dollars. Yeah, on it. I think so. So the only modification that I did was it only called for one row of pockets, and I've actually added two rows. So there's six total pockets. Look at you. Um, because we want to use me. every single yeah. bit of those pockets. Uh, and that'll help me. So I added the contrast, the fabric that's on the inside, I added as one of the rows of pockets. Um, especially because my fabric is like optical illusion. Like after you look at it for so long, your eyes start crossing. It reminds me of seashells. Yeah, it's a it's a calf facet um, print, but I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this one is mine, and then of course Laura <laughs> Laura went the silly route, and <laughs> this one is Laura's. I'm planning on wearing this to work one day. <laughs> Um, like when I teach my fiber arts unit, I'm to or we do a maker space. I'm totally wearing this to work. Yeah, so it's got dinosaurs on there, saying <laughs> grrr, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then the contrast fabric is this purple linen, and then it's got six pockets as well. Pockets is so that I'm one's super yours, excited. Yes. and this one's mine. And um, I actually spent I I didn't start on them until. I cut the fabric. You had washed it. You had searched it, yeah, right? Yeah, I searched the edges and washed it, which I wouldn't normally do for something like an apron where it doesn't really have to be perfect, but um, I had the time because I was waiting on the liner and fabric anyway. And uh, Did it did it come from the nope. place you ordered it from? I went to oh, Joanne's and got some. Oh, snap. Yeah, uh, that's a whole other topic. But I spent probably 12 hours... I bet you I could put knitting in one of those pockets. Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I spent so long, I had this, like a permanent crook in my neck. Um, and last night when Game of Thrones Season 7 was uh, debuting, 
I was laying on an ice pack because it hurt so much. Aww. But if I, it's done. And it's really my own fault for having bad posture, so. <laughs> anyway, you'll see us in our crazy, ridiculous aprons if you're going to SSK. We'll definitely be wearing them on market day. Yeah, locals. market will be um, yeah, it, Saturday from 1 to 4 if you're in the Nashville area. We hope to see you there. Yeah. That'll be tons of fun. Yeah, I, think I didn't ask Mrs. Shu. She, she, sometimes she goes on vacation and comes down. Like a family vacation. I don't know if she's coming this year or not. not sure. But we have a few folks who are semi-regular yeah. and they come and see us. So that's always Definitely. a good time. Uh, totally is. That's it. You have some spinning. I do have a few things um, that I've spun. So it's Tour de Fleece, which is a big spinning season for me. And, um, oh, I have lots of stuff for you in here. <laughs> Remind oh, yeah. me. Leslie, but I forgot your painting, which is still in oh, my house. Oh, sorry. Um, so this bag looks very full, but a lot of it's Leslie stuff. So I have a Knit Spin Farm bat that I spun. This is Frosted Morning. This is one of my Shock Reeves long draw. It's Merino, Polworth, Sorry Silk, Silk Targi. Um, so it's a nice and fluffy spin. And it was 300 total yards. It was a 3.5 ounce bat. So that is the first thing. I do love spinning long draw on my Shack Reefs. The second long draw item that I have. Ooh. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I was thinking about giving it away to SSK, and then I was like, nope. <laughs> um, this is another Knit Spin Farm bag. <laughs> that. Um, the tag for the other one got I'm covered destroyed. in sweet tea. <laughs> yeah, I had been at Laura's house for like five minutes on Saturday the first day that I was to puppy sit and had like a root 44 sweet tea, which is like my favorite thing from Sonic. It's just, it's like, I don't know, 64. It's like a gallon Huge, or something of sweet yeah. tea. And I went to pick it up and it just went effing <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> anyway. And Pearl was probably helping you clean it up. I locked her in the kitchen because oh, she you? was trying to help. And I was like, this is too much sugar for you, baby. <laughs> um, so this is Blood Orange. It's another Knit Spin Farm bet. This is around 200 yards. It's Angelina, Blue Face Luster, Merino, Shetland, Silk Noil, and Targi. It's three ounces. Again, spun long draw on the Shaft Reeves. Plied on the um, mini spinner. And then while I was away, I spun some Knit Spin Farm Cordale. That's really pretty as a three ply it's a little bit crunchy like it definitely got a little bit over twisted i don't think so i'll take but, it <laughs> i think they'll be good house socks like short house slippers um so it's a three ply and i don't think she named this colorway it's really hard to see the nieces helped me spin this Alice especially alice her hands move very very fast i had to tell her to slow down <laughs> So you got the speedy feet and she's got the speedy hands. Apparently. Although it was on mom's mini spinner, which was really nice um, to be able to use it. And then she was spinning on it too. And she gave me some uh, Into the World lizard Spock fiber. Oh, yeah. But I was like, I don't have time to spin this Rock, now. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard yeah, Spock. Yeah, so that's like my favorite colorway. This is Cordale again. I love Cordale. This is from Hello Yarn. It's As the Tree Glowed colorway. This is our Patreon prize for this month. We were going to draw a Patreon today, but... No internet! No internet. So, but look, I'm ahead! I'm ahead! <laughs> look, this is done for this month. Um, and hopefully I'll get next month's done too fast. So this is 400 yards of a two-ply. Uh, using a short forward draw on the ladybug, and then plied on the mini. Um, four ounces. It's got a little mini skein of the dark green. I hated this in the bag, and then I saw it spun up. Uh, that other people have done and I was like that's really pretty so it does have a glow about it it does it's very shiny I'm gonna leave that here yay me along with um I grabbed some turtle pearl yarn for our yarn this month cool that was our SSK yarn last yeah, year yeah there was one skein left and then everything in the, else in here is yours and I need to give it to you later so that is the spinning that I have done. Um, I did not, I was hoping to get three pounds done during Tour TDF. Yeah, and I did not. I got almost two pounds done. But I still have another week 
I don't know how much spinning yeah, I'm going to get done at SSK. I mean, I'm taking two spinning classes, so maybe I'll get, like, four ounces done between those two classes maybe. and samples. Um, but, and I have six ounces currently on the wheel because I am doing this cool cable structure that looks like Rick Rack trim. Yeah, you were telling me about yeah, it. Yeah, so I spun eight ounces of Southern Cross Fiber Thick going S direction. Two ounces of Hello Yarn Super Thin going S direction. I applied those two together going Z. And it's funny. I ended up with, like, a yard left over of the thick, and that was it. <laughs> like, how, what? What? Um, and then I have, tonight I might spend two ounces going Z. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow morning I'm going to get up at 6.30 to watch the oh, tour. The tour. Um, today was a rest day. And so I will then, and I wanted stuff to sit overnight in between because it's more yeah. crazy structure. Um, I might ply tomorrow before. What's, what time are you getting in the van? Um, I don't know, but I need your help with it. I think around 10 o'clock. Okay. I'll text you. Yeah. I'll look it up when I have internet. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so that's what's on the wheel. There's six ounces plied on a mini spinner bobbin with two more to go. And then I'll have another cable ply structure um, to get done. And then I'll be done with the spinning section of the owl. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I had to... Um, I was only anticipating using two ounces of the thick. Yeah. And I started spinning it, and I was like, yeah, no. I'm going to end up with, like, 20 yards. Yeah. So I uh, changed my owl. I did a change request and got two new... Um, bags for the second structure so that way I can kind of do the same so anyway I'm getting there is it a spiral cable I think is the other one hopefully it won't involve spiral plying who knows <laughs> I need to look it up anyway so you spinning too you spun at my house some I did um, I, when I was at Laura's house I was on call um, as well I had a lot going on and I actually went almost an entire week without knitting a single stitch because I just didn't, I wasn't in the headspace for it. But um, I was spinning and here, I'll show you what I worked on. So first I took- I haven't even seen these yet. Um, I have some hobbledehoy battlings in the rogue raft color and I had like 4.3 ounces or something like that. And I only got through about two, about half of it. Um, before I was just done. But is that Course Fun too? It is. Wow. So it's a Course Fun show. It's it was on a, a Zephyr core, um, Zephyr silk lace. It was something that I had pre added twist to a while back. It's been on the bobbin for like three years or something. The the core. And so I plied it while I watched a uh, documentary on Caligula. It was the first I'd ever I never, um, I had heard people reference Caligula, but I didn't know what it I was. I don't know who that is. Oh, it was a Roman emperor. Okay. Um, after Caesar, who was known for his debauchery. Um, apparently some really twisted things. There you go. And he was also young. I think he was like 24 when he died. Was he Which was not, an, yeah, it was not an uncommon thing at that point. Yeah, no. <laughs> but Assassinations are key in ancient Rome. So I core spun the Rograft battlings onto the Zephyr core. Do you have a plan for it? No, nope, I just wanted to do it. It. Um, it might be that's a giveaway if even. anybody thinks that they actually want it. I think that's pretty. It. Uh, it's only 190 yards. And it's, it's still decent yard. I would just say, like a, yeah, somewhere in the DK range. Um, I might take it to SSK as a giveaway. But it actually, you know, of course when I took it off and wound it off onto Laura's skein winder, and I took it off, it went <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but um, after it got its wash, it actually ended up pretty even. So Look at you. I was pretty happy about that. So I think I'll probably take it to SSK as a giveaway or as like a raffle item. There you go. This is the difference between the two of us at SSK giveaways. Like, Leslie does all her, all her work in advance. Me, it's like, it goes through well, the following year. You, you make it sound like it's pre-planned, and that's not <laughs> the case. The case is, I'll go through stuff that I've made, and I'll be like, oh, people might like this, or people might like that. 
and I enjoy giving stuff away um, for the most part and I have learned the hard way not to sign myself up for future work only because with me then I never want to do it it has nothing to do with it, it could be for somebody amazing and it's just now that I know that I have to do it uh uh I'm done yeah so um, I make sure that I you know have some things to choose from and those are my raffle items and then my second Whereas was... I'm like, I'll spin a skein for you. And you will. It might <laughs> be a little bit, yeah, but you will do it. Um, and then another two months to mail it to you. <laughs> and then at home on the flat iron, I had some Hello That's Yarn. That's interesting. Um, viscous. This was the... That's a yarn school Yarn colorway. school colorway that we went, when we went in 2014. Huh. Um, I have no idea where any of my... Because you could purchase extra yarn school, right. different colorways. And so I got like four... Because at that point, I wasn't in the club. Yeah. And I wasn't... Like, I was buying Hello Yarn off of D-Stash. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't doing a lot of updates um, that I could catch. Yeah. I'm sure she was doing updates, but... I was just not catching them, so I was buying a lot on D stashes, and mm -hmm. someone has mouse ears on a D stash. Now, I still look at the D stashes, even though oh. I haven't purchased on D stash for a while. But anyway. This was um, was the I Yarn got School colorway, mm -hmm. and I spun, I split it in two. It's Cordale, and um, love Cordale. It's called Viscous, and I did a supported long draw on this, so it's really um, light and fluffy and squeezy and squeezy and <laughs> squishy. <laughs> yeah. And um, I did not end up, when I was plying it, I didn't end up with like 20 yards left on one bobbin, so I made an Andean bracelet and then just... I've been using that a ton with like long draw especially. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you do it from the center pole ball, it kind of like gets all crinkly. Yeah, but and Andean's who was it that... To go. I took a spinning class. Sarah Anderson did Andean in hers. It might have been in hers, or it could have been in Maggie Casey's last year, where we were doing an Andean ply, and it was like a revelation for me, because Andean ply, for those of you who aren't spinners, is when you, you basically, you wind yarn in this complicated, well, I say complicated, it's it feels complicated. complicated. So you go around your thumb, like two or three times, then you go around the back of your hands, go around your middle finger, back around, around this way, so you're always going back the way you came so what this happens is if I have an end I can pull I can take this and put it around my wrist and take this end and take the other end and ply from both ends I or have to look up the diagram every time oh. but uh, Kitchener's like that I got it no problem but I have to look at the diagram for Andy and ply every time so basically I just make it up <laughs> and I just, I've made it up before, I but just that, go and that might not be correct, but that's what works for me. <laughs> I just go around and around in the circle, but the thing that was like a revelation for me with, um, I, I want to say it was Maggie Casey, although it could have been Sarah Anderson, was that if you, the, the problem with an Andy and Ply for me is if you put the yarn under tension, and you have to put it under a little bit of tension, or else it'll end up coming back off your fingers, is that after a while, if you're Andy implying a lot, your your fingers start turning Dude, purple. I ended <laughs> I Andy implied like ninety yards yeah. the other day. Like it looks like I had a mass around my Yeah, because it cuts off the circulation. Um, now I do it pretty clearly. You shouldn't be doing that. I do it pretty without a lot of pressure. Yeah. So I did not cut off my circulation, but it was slowly bending my middle finger. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like this. that at the end yeah. as I'm trying to wrap it. But. Um, the thing that was so interesting to me was as you know once you get to a point where it becomes stressful you can just pop it onto your wrist and then keep going and just keep wrapping oh. and just do it over and, and keep popping it adding on to your wrist i didn't even think about that. i didn't either and it was like why didn't i think that makes so much sense now sarah anderson in her class showed us how to use your like elbows in this to do like a nitty naughty did she show you that how to do a hand no but I, I ended up leaving before the end because I had to run out and grab something that we needed although I can't remember what now I think oh, tickets okay. or something so I didn't get through oh, did the we entire get tickets? class yes okay I ordered excellent them. Um, and you got a ticket stand, didn't you? I did. <laughs> We're gonna be so fancy. This I, year. We have a we've got a first aid kit and a tool kit, and <laughs> man, we are there. A dental repair kit because we use it for the wheels <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, this was supported long draw spun on the flat iron plied on Laura's mini that has the woolly wander. It doesn't have it on it right now. The poor person who's borrowing the mini at SSK, um, it's the flyer that I draw. 
sobs. <laughs> so, like, the one side's fine. It works perfect. Oh, but the, the other the side thingy. is missing the ceramic orifice, cracked yeah. and fell out. So, it would still work. It might be a little rough. There's still one working side. But I only have two bobbins for my um, Wooly Winder one. Yeah. Which means I should buy more AcreWorks bobbins. That's what that means. Um, I only use it for applying, but yeah. for uh, Jillian's class, you needed three. Yeah. So I couldn't have the Wooly Winder on there. So, but anyway. All right. Um, reading. I'm reading a Bev McAllister book. Um, she does, like, steampunk vampire stuff. And so, is it Beck McAllister? I think it's Beck McAllister. Let me look. Um, so I read the first in that series. And I'm starting the second. One of my coworkers is texting me asking me if I want to go to lunch tomorrow. The answer is nope. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't, like, I would go. Except. Except I won't be here. <laughs> um, Mission Improper by Beck Mc... Mass. Mc... Well, let me go to the cloud. Yeah, I'm going to pull up and see what I'm reading because, again, internet's out, so I have to use my um, phone signal. about this book? Mission Improper by Beck McMaster. So, oh, I don't think you guys can see it there. That's the Kindle page. So I got that. I actually thought I bought the second one today, but it's not showing up yet. Huh. I'll have to mess with that. Um, I also finished all the Megan Whalen Turners. I think I had finished that last time. I read a new um, short story that was free by Karen Ch uh, Chance that goes with her Dory series. I started a new book that someone recommended to me. I can't remember if it was on Rav or not, um, called Heart of, Mal Heart of Malice by Lisa Edwards, and I enjoyed that quite immensely. Um... I think that's about it. So that's what I've, oh, and I, um, I think I already talked about Silver Silence. So I've been reading a lot of like steampunk and adult, um, paranormal romance type stuff. But the steampunk, the Beck McMasters, um, this is actually a new spinoff series from her other series. I don't like those a lot. They're vampires, but it's not your normal, like, vampires are sexy. No, vampires kill people, and mm. no one wants to be a vampire. And if you get infected, you're a blue blood. Um, so what happens is, like, the king of England or some a duke of England went over to China or India or someplace and brought back the virus that creates vampires. But they don't actually want to become vampires. They want to exist in this... Um, blue blood status, which gives you all the perks of being a vampire without the crazy insanity where you murder everyone and become kind of albino-ish. Um, so they want to keep their blood levels like in the 60% range or whatever. And there's all this technology that goes with it and vampires are off control, out of like totally out of control and no one wants to be them but there's also like the slums area so there's also like these social class issues it's a it's a good series i i enjoyed the first one and i just started enjoying the second one so hmm. it's all good what have you been reading um nothing i'm gonna own up to <laughs> all the m uh no let me see i downloaded um the new Tove Foss Ford book. This author was new to me last year and I read a book by um, him, her, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, called The Weaving Man. And I really liked it. It's, it was sort of... Oh, is that the one that you just reread? No. Okay. It was sort of fantasy-ish, but it was very, like, G-rated. Well, except for the violence. Um, that would put it more in R-rated. But... Uh, about a former assassin who's put in charge of raising a baby and it goes through um, the things that he does to protect her through her like teenage years and that's where it leaves off and the second book just came out but I want to reread the first one because I really enjoyed it uh -huh. um, the second one is called Love and Sacrifice let's see what else did I read this week um, 
Oh, I finished the second one in that Steal the Light series. I forget what it was called, though. Biloxi Blake? Yes. Um, I listened to... Something a, of Thieves, isn't it? Something like that? Something the Light. Uh, it's the Light series, but I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I listened to Alana Andrews' White Hot. Um, I had already read it and uh, listened to it. This is what I'm listening to right now. What do you think it's about? <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, uh, my audible. I'm listening to White Hot right now too, actually. Because uh, I'm waiting for the third to come out. Oh, I did listen to an interesting one called um, The High King's Golden Tongue. And it's a male male romance, although there's not a whole lot of that. <laughs> With a name like the High King's Golden Tongue, it's a male male romance. Well, but it's a. It, the Golden Tongue is a spin off of one of the main characters who's a Silver Tongue. So uh -huh. he's a, a translator. Oh. That's what they called them in this particular uh -huh. um, thing. Was this, but this is, one has a golden tongue? Because he knows like 14 <laughs> languages. Uh -huh. So the soldiers call him the golden tongue. Uh, at no point in this does his tongue do anything dirty. <laughs> um, That's a little bit of a disappointment in a male male. It is the first of many, I'm sure. But um, it was a With pretty a good book. Like that, yeah. um, it was about how uh, he was picked to be a consort for this king. Um whose previous husband had died and but you know he didn't want a new husband and this consort came and, and you listened to this you yeah it. this was a an audible listen um and i actually also downloaded a knight in shining armor by jude Devereux Aww. and got a couple hours into it and was like yeah i'm gonna vomit i gotta take a break from this it was too sicky sweet um for me so i can only do that is it the one where he's blind no oh um this was my like uh, guilty pleasure romance from when I was in high school. Yeah, there's one where he, is it late in the I don't know. There's one where the the knight is blind. That might it might be the only Jude Devereux I've ever read. Really? It's just it was the one that I happened to pick up at my friend Alicia's house when I was 13 or 14, and so it's always stuck oh, with man, me. Man, I loved Jude Devereux when I was like 18, 19. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. As far as favorite things. Um, SSK is sort of the predominant force this week. Yeah. Um, I got to spend lots of time with family last week, which was lots yeah. of fun. Um, so that's definitely in my favorite things. But SSK is always lots of fun, and that's quickly approaching. Um, I am planning on doing some Instagram videos, mm -hmm. some live chats at SSK. Um, and if Laura saves them, is. then we'll put them up Yeah, then later. we'll put them up. I'm going to try. Usually it allows me to save them, but sometimes it gets, like, the when they're really long, it doesn't want to save them. Yeah. But hopefully the internet at Scare It, there'll be, like, a bazillion people on it, but hopefully it'll still be okay. Yeah, that's usually okay, but market day can be stressful because there's all the vendors using the, the network in order to run their payments, so. Yeah, definitely. Um... I think that's it. Do not expect an episode from us next week, at least not until, like, Monday or Tuesday at the earliest, assuming that we do one next week. It just yeah. depends. Um, we'll see how it goes. We, If we do, it'll be more of an SSK recap. It won't be... Yeah. Um, they're probably... I mean, we might have our socks done, maybe. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we're not going to have any progress on anything to show you. But we'll see how it goes. So... We can talk about what we purchase at the market, if nothing else. Yeah... I had a pet talk with myself earlier. Where I was like, "Do you need anything? You don't need anything. You're good. You're not going to buy anything this year." I like buy. I like supporting. Our I vendors, do too. Though, and so. realistically, I'm totally going to buy stuff. But in my head, I was like, "I'm good. I don't need anything." Yeah. But I'll see something and I'll be like, "Ooh." Oh, here's a heads up. If you've been thinking about getting a Maja Craft or any of the accessories, um, they did jump in price last week, maybe the week before. So, if you're still on the fence, um, like, the rose went up around $200, and some of the other wheels, some, th some little things went down, but, like, the lace flyer went up quite a bit. Um, the Woolery, I know, has the newer prices, or even, I don't know what's going on with their prices. They're very, very high right now. Mm -hmm. higher, than a, higher than the list prices, higher than anything else. But, um, like, Yarn Barn had the old prices I looked this morning. So if you're, like, on the fence, now might be the time before they jump. If you can find someone who's still using the old prices, if your local shop sells them and has the old prices because they still have the old inventory, um, now might be the time. I'm just saying. So, maybe very glad that I got the rose used when I did. 
Because now they're like almost $1,400. Yeah, I'm a fan of used wheels in general, as long as they're in good shape. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that you have to try out. Yeah. It's not something that you can really buy sight unseen. Um, but, you know, it's all good. Uh, if you can get a deal, go for it. I've seen people, though, who have, like, the high, like, the wheels that have, like, year wait list. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the pocket wheels. They'll get them, keep them for six months, and then sell them for, like, an extra hundred bucks mm-hmm. to someone who doesn't want to wait on the wait list. Which is kind of, I don't know. It's free market, though. I mean, it is a free market economy. For sure. It's, you know, maybe not the most well-intentioned thing, but there's, you know. Also, Amy is bringing a wheel to SSK that I want. Which Amy? I want see. Uh, Ross Farms. She's oh. bringing a pippy. A what? A pippy. They're made in, like, they were made in New Zealand. They're a vintage style wheel. Oh. So, I've been looking at them online for a while. How many wheels do you have? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Too many, Three, but four, I want to spin on it and see if I like it. Five, because if I don't six, like it, then I don't, I don't need to. There are wheels. Done. There are wheels that I don't Ooh. like. Go you. So now it's just easy. So anyhow, um, I've got some last minute stuff I've got to do, like yeah. pack um, for me. Like yeah, the wheels are great and they're gonna have oil and bobbins <laughs> and everything. But do I have clean underwear packed? Nope, not yet. Uh. And Pearl's packed. That's awesome. <laughs> she has her own backpack full of crap. <laughs> She's like a toddler. Toddlers have so much crap. It's ridiculous. It is like I had um, so those like dentist sticks that I get for her go in her orange toy. They fit perfectly, mm-hmm. but I was out of them, so I had to go get more of those. And <laughs> she's been like only into two certain toys. She is a toddler. <laughs> anyway, yeah. she's all packed except for her water bottles. Yeah, I've got to do laundry and pack that. I've got to, um, this is the only knitting I'm taking because I'm not going to get a pair of socks on SSK. It's not going to happen. And if you do, there will be more yarn. There will. And, uh... We will spend enough at House of Yarn <laughs> that there will be free skeins of yarn, probably. Um, yeah, so if you're going to be at SSK, then we're stoked and we're glad that we're going to see you. And if you're not, then we'll see you again in a week or so. When yeah, we're have before. a great week. I totally just almost had a heart attack because I thought that the little microphone bar wasn't, wasn't moving, moving. And I was like, mother, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're good. Um, <laughs> anything else? My brain stopped working. I think that's it. Okay. Who knows what we've forgotten. Yeah. We probably skipped whole segments. I've, yeah. I've, I've got, I've, Laura's got this thing where before big events like SSK, she doesn't sleep. Nope. And now it's come on to me. And oh, I don't know why. I, I think part of it's because I was on call last week, and the noise that I make, I make the on-call phone have the most annoying sound, because it's the only way to wake me up. Yeah. And, like, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I got woken up in the middle of the night, because I heard it, even though it totally never went off, because it's powered off and in a drawer now. I woke myself up thinking I had heard that noise, and so I haven't slept great. Aww. But it'll it'll be better. You can nap tomorrow afternoon after we get stuff done. Yeah. Well, as I always really I always sleep really good after SSK because I'm exhausted. Yeah. Um, in I a need good to pack way. another pillow. Yeah, I need to pack my pillow because I'm a delicate flower and get a headache if I don't sleep on my pillow. I need to remember that. Anyway, that's it. All right. Y'all have an awesome week. Yeah, um, we'll it, see you guys we'll soon. We'll see you either at SSK or next time we record. Yep. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.